In this series, you will learn how to use Blender cloth simulations and will create the cloth elements of this bedroom scene. In the description, there will be a link to some resources, including the download to the base of this scene without any of the cloth, along with a blend file with no groups that you can use to help to create cloth materials. For now, let's start with the basic concepts of using the cloth simulations. So you'll first need to have a plane. So shift A, add plane. And you're gonna need to have a bunch of subdivisions so that you have resolution for the wrinkles to form. So right click, subdivide, and then you can press shift R to duplicate that action a few times, or you could use the number of cuts to increase it. Then you can tab out of edit mode. You can add the cloth simulation either through add modifier cloth or through this little physics tab here. Press cloth. If you're at the modifier, pressing this little button right here will bring you to the settings in the physics tab. So if I press play by pressing the space bar, it'll start falling. It has nothing to collide against with or anything, so it's just going to kind of fall and remain perfectly flat. Maybe I could add another mesh, such as a sphere. And I'll drag that down and I will add collision to the sphere. If I press play, the cloth can collide with the sphere. There's several settings here for the type of cloth based off of the stiffness. And there's a little presets button here that you can use to choose between different ones. By default, it will be cotton. If you go with something like rubber, it will be a lot more stiff and respond in a different way. Or you could go with silk, which will be a lot less stiff. And you can see it has a lot of these small wrinkles. I'm going to skip over eternal springs and pressure for now. Cache has the settings for baking the simulation. If you press play, it will automatically bake some of these frames. And you'll see this like little blue line at the bottom showing where the frames have been baked. As it has an end frame of 250, if I went to 250, and as you can see, if you skip ahead, it will kind of glitch out. So you want to go through each of these normally. But if I went to 250, once I get to 250, it'll stop doing anything. Unless I add more frames here. And baked frames, which are the blue ones, will perform better because it doesn't have to recalculate. In the shape category, we have a pin group option. If I go into the vertex group settings and select some vertices, add a group, assign, and I can call this group pin. I can then go back to the cloth and add the pin to it. And if I press play, you'll see that these two vertices have been pinned into place and they will stay there while the rest of the cloth falls normally. These pin vertices can be animated in a few different ways, such as with shape keys. If I add the basis and then a new key, tab into edit mode and scale down, I can then keyframe this at a value of zero and then at a value of one. And if I press play, you'll see that these two vertices are animated as they go together. You can use this kind of effect for closing curtains. Another method is that you can use hooks. So I can select this one, press Control H, hook to new object. And this one, Control H, hook to new object. If I put the hooks ahead of the cloth modifier and I press play, I can move these hooks around. And of course, I can animate them with keyframes as well. Next, there's sewing, which works by having two pieces of cloth that you want to sew together. So you need to create like these edges that I can call thread edges, I guess. So select, say, two edges here, press right click, 
and bridge edge loops. Press X and only faces, and now you'll only have these edges. So you can think of those as threads. Alt click and Alt shift click to select these two loops. Right click, bridge edge loops, and X, delete only faces. So if I press play now, they will sew together. You can adjust how much the max sewing force is. Now it's barely coming together at all. As you can see, I can add, say, a cylinder with collision. And if I press play, it'll sew and wrap around it kind of like an arm with a sleeve. There's shrinking factor where you can make it shrink during the simulation, or you can make it expand if you go in the negative direction. Now there's settings for collisions. You can increase the quality, but it'll be slower. And then there's the settings for the object collisions where you can adjust how much distance there is. So for example, if I had say a cube with collision here and I press play, you'll see that there's a little bit of a gap here. So you can decrease this a bit, but you can't really bring it all the way down to say zero because it's not perfectly accurate. But you can try to get a little bit closer. Also, you may notice that the cloth will often slide off collision really easily. And that's because the collision shapes usually have really low friction. So if you increase the friction on the collision shape and then you press play, it will stop sliding down. There's self collisions, which will slow down the simulation, but it will make sure that the cloth doesn't end up intersecting with itself because it will try to collide and make sure that it doesn't go through itself. So you can enable that and maybe decrease this to more like 0 0.003. Under property weights, you can have certain vertex groups adjust how the various stiffness settings work. Under field weights, you can adjust how much it responds to certain physics forces such as gravity, you can turn off the gravity and it'll stay in place. You can have it maybe react more strongly or less strongly to wind if you have like a curtain blowing the wind or a flag or something. Next, we'll go back to internal springs and pressure. So if I add, say, a cube and shrink it down and add a bunch of loops to it, I can add a cloth simulation and add pressure to it. And it'll be easier to see if I turn off the gravity field weight. So if I press play, nothing's happening because by default it doesn't have any pressure. So I'll increase the pressure. And as you can see, it just kind of like inflates like a balloon. And this can be a really good way to create some quick cushions. So if you have less pressure, it'll end up more wrinkly because as you can imagine, like a balloon that's fully inflated is nice and smooth while one that's like half inflated will have a bunch of these wrinkles because it doesn't have enough pressure to keep every part of it perfectly smooth. So if I have like a really high pressure, like 100, it'll like really quickly expand and it will be very smooth. If I had something really low, like two, slower and it has these big wrinkles. I might go ahead and like apply this cloth shape and then I can add another one. Next I will add a cube and I will add collision to this and then I'll add cloth back to this shape here and then I can use eternal springs. Now internal springs will have the cloth simulation in a volumetric way so that the cloth is on the inside and not just on the surface. So if I press play, it will bounce a little bit and squish a little bit, but it won't end up just kind of collapsing on itself like if I turned off the eternal springs. So this kind of works like a soft body, but a little more clothy maybe. 
So if I turn these settings way down by like drag selecting and put it to like 0.1 or something, you'll see that it just has a little bit of strength and it kind of collapses in on the bottom where it's pressing down. So that way you can have your pillows or whatever kind of integrate with the rest of the environment more by having it flattened down at the bottom when it's like touching a bed or a floor or something. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this and check down in the description to see the playlist where I'll be putting each of these videos for the series as I add them. Thank you for watching.